So for those that, that don't know, um, uh, we're here with Avalon Star or Brian Veloso. Um, I'm going to just like uh, open up with having you talk about you and, and who you are and, and what you've been up to in the in industry. Sure. Um, so yeah, yeah, my name is Brian. Um, I am currently a partner broadcaster here on Twitch, but you know, that's not why we're here today. Uh, I actually have a pretty long history on the web. Um, I've worked for companies like Facebook, GitHub, Automatic, the makers of WordPress, Twitch. I worked for Twitch for two and a half years, and then I streamed for six. And so um, I have, you know, one foot firmly in each of the, each of those two industries. And uh, yeah, over the past, like it's been a whirlwind of a month because, um, you know, I went from just changing my career from wanting to create content to wanting to provide a place, a safe place for people to my friends and my peers to create content. Yeah, that so, is why I am here today. So you've been, uh, you've pretty much seen every aspect of streaming from working for streamers mm -hmm. to actually streaming yourself and now building out Altair. So how did, how did Project Altair start? So it started out of the, um, it honestly started out of the, I guess I can call it the Twitch's Me Too movement. Like I have had a lot of feelings about the way startups are run, the way that we expect startups to run just in general in Silicon Valley. And, you know, when you work for, when you work for them and, you know, I can bring up the, the example I can go to is that I was, I was one of the first 30 employees at Facebook. So, you know, I, I know what it was like at the beginning and to see where it is now, it just doesn't give me any pride to have been, to have seen what these companies can become. So, um, I've always been a person throughout my career, whether I was working for developers or working for streamers where I needed to. I needed to surround myself with the people I was designing for. I'm a web, I'm a UI designer by trade. And so Project Altair came out of this sort of frustration and with, with the very fact that the, the way Twitch is built, not even from a technological standpoint, just the fact that it's a company that takes venture capital, that it's a, a corporation that is made to make money where you and I aren't their primary stakeholders. It is, you know, it's Amazon. It is their, it is Amazon's investors that are the primary stakeholders. There are things that, that hinders them from actually being able to do things that protect us as broadcasters, as content creators. And so, you know, I let out, <laughs> as with things that usually happen with me, I, I just put out a joke tweet one day and I'm like, hey, what is it, you know, asking for a friend? What does it take to, to start a streaming service these days. And I have a, I had a good friend of mine who I met through another uh, broadcaster I'm close to come out and say, Hey, well, you know, I have some know-how with this. Let's, you know, let's get this started. And a week later we had the domain, we had the, you know, a plan and, you know, I started, I started tweeting about it mainly because we wanted to make sure we had people know what we were about from day one. And mm -hmm. You know, Altair from its very beginnings, like, let me just, let me just put this out there. We are a public benefit corporation, which means that our legal requirement in our bylaws as a corporation is to provide a public benefit for our stakeholders. Like that is like Ben and Jerry's does that. Uh, mm. there, are a bun there are a bunch of other companies that do that. So it's like from the very beginning, I want to tell people that we are here you're our stakeholders. We're not taking any venture capital because we don't want to be beholden to people that don't understand what it's like to be in our shoes, that don't understand what it's like to be a viewer, a moderator, a broadcaster. And we're trying to like flip the model uh, on that. We're taking a look at everything. Like you said, I've, I've, I have intimate knowledge of pretty much of a lot of things about the streaming business. So yeah, being able to take a look at everything and being like, okay, well, we want to build this mindfully because as you know, and you've, you know, you've talked about this so much on streamer square and on your own cast, how important and how, uh, let's see, overlooked mental health is on Twitch for sure. And, and just in, in content creation in general, like, is there a way that we can provide a service? We can provide a service to people where we take care of their, we look out for their mental health, their mental wellness, be mindful of things like metrics, 
while they're able to create a community because that's pretty much what I loved about about this industry is being able to connect with people like yourself with my community. I would have I would if I had to do this all over again, I would do it the exact same way because I've made so many amazing friends, so many I have expanded my horizons just as a person. Mm -hmm. Um just as becoming a more mindful and a more empathetic person, this has been a great way to do it, but we need to be protected from predators from and not just predators in when it comes to like you know going to a conference and not being not being like abused or harassed but also from like you know people should be able to make a a living off of this without having to sell their soul for sure a larger company for it so yeah so <clears throat> and, and, and you know um i feel like twitch has had a lot of growing pains you know as they've their growth kind of like exploded over the past few years as being like the standout streaming platform, um, mm -hmm. you know, original originating from gaming and then obviously broadening to just chatting and a lot of other, you know, categories. So, um, you know, how much of um, how much of, of Twitch's problems with moderation, these issues that you point out are just due to, you know, just being corporate versus like just, like just having like inherent flaws in their their vision and you know what what their goals are i think one feeds into the other i think if you don't say from the get-go and this is something that i think a lot of startups overlook if you don't say from the get-go that your your stakeholders are your content creators then all your other decisions are going to be affected by that one tenant and but it's so you know you're you're your employees don't look at your bylaws, but then they they complain about what, why you're not doing something, or they create principles and processes, uh, you know, ab about how to take care of things like abuse on the platform and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're already stuck. You're, you're you're already stuck to this whole thing where it's like, well, we took a hundred million dollars or whatever from from this, from this, you know, this, these guys, like Andreessen Horowitz or another VC firm, mm -hmm. we took this money from them. They own part of the company. So now we're beholden to them in some way. It's like, it's like, it's like, tra it's like shadow, shadow cuffs, I guess I could say. It's like it, one affects the other. Mm -hmm. so, so, go ahead. So, uh, I mean, so people are going to ask like, you know, how do you build, how do you take on such a massive project without having, uh, you know, investors or uh, some type of corporation take over. So that's the, that's one of the big, you know, hurdles we're trying to, uh, we're trying to jump. And, you know, I have, I have some personal stake that I have in this. And a lot of it is just coming up with a revenue model that sort of makes sense. And uh, one of the things that I've wanted to do is sort of separate the the whole notion of you know supporting Twitch versus supporting a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. I think uh, with many models, it's you know it works for Twitch. Like when when aff affiliates were were launched, it's like yay, people can make money on Twitch. So can and but Twitch can also make more money because they take that they take that cut. Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily you every for every dollar you give to a broadcaster, Twitch takes a portion of that, so they get their cut. And so, you know, as the money rises, so does their, so does their, pro so does their revenue. Like we want to be transparent and it's just a matter of like, we don't have to grow super fast. I think right now we have a team of five. Um, I'm the lead designer. My uh, Cody, who's in the chat is, is lead engineer. And we have um, three other, four other wonderful people that are, that are helping us with, you know, different engineering and um engineering outreach and uh, other bits like that i think mm -hmm. we're so we're giving ourselves restrictions and we're trying to cr trying to pull from all these different models like you know co-ops like rei and um we're looking at everything because we're since we're given we, since we're being given these restrictions we have to think about how we do this in a way that doesn't compromise our vision, but also allows us to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping, at least I'm hoping, that like, you know, there are models in the future that could allow, you know, actual creators to have a stake in the company 
or you know memberships like i guess pe some people know about the rei membership like there we're, we're throwing all these ideas around but we don't have to since we're not being given a whole vat of money to just hire we have to actually think about how we're going to build this from the beginning and like okay, well, I, I have design chops and development chops. I can build most of the website. Cody, my, my partner, Cody, is, uh, is very into broadcasting or broadcasting equipment, the broadcasting infrastructure. So he's trying to work out how we're going to take care of chat, how we're going to take care of um, delivering video to everybody, because that's apparently the most important, most expensive part. Right, right. So um, it's not impossible, but our backs are against the wall. But right. that's the challenge we want to take. Like, it's the technology in all of this is easy. Anybody can build a technology company because you can just, like, outsource that to another country. You can you can outsource pretty much anything, but you can't outsource your vision. You can't mm -hmm. outsource the very basic part of what makes you tick. And, um, you know, if it takes us six months, a year, year and a half to actually get to a scale where we can be like, let's, you know, take let's see if we can get like a percent or two of the market, which is really all we want, all we want. Like I'm not wanting, I'm not in this to defeat Twitch. Like I want people to have an alternative. I keep, I say we're an alternative to Twitch because at the same time, like I'm not going to say, Hey, Hey Loco, you want to come over at Altair? If I want you, I want people, anybody looking at Altair to see, okay, well, these are the things that are important to me. And I believe that I can just, I can bring my community over and not, hinder my standard of my, my standard of living like i'm not going to be trying to buy co buy contracts from people it's like we're providing you with a safe place a place mm -hmm. we it's safe and we have a model that's different if you like that model bring your community over and let's prove it to you and i know that some people are ready to are ready to be ju to jump in at um you know right when we open and i know a lot of other people are going to be more um, you know, they're going to weigh their options and I completely support that. I have to, you know, I have to, this product has to support my community, which I'm still going to be bringing over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have, uh, you're a good test subject because yeah, you, you, subject. Do, you yeah. stream already. So you know what you mm -hmm. need from a streaming platform. Yeah. So have you thought about the, like going with an approach of like something different where, you know, you see these, uh, competitors, pop up out of nowhere and they're like, hey, come here. We've got to we'll offer you money. Like, you know, we'll pay you to come over and, and anyone can stream. Have you thought about perhaps doing like an exclusive rollout where you have to sign up and get approved to stream and kind of expanding from there, which would allow you to kind of moderate your resources a little bit better and see like, you know, what you're bringing in, what's it costing instead of just like, letting anyone stream from the get-go i think from a engineering and cost standpoint that's gonna have to happen uh in some way like a like a beta test or you know we have a what we're calling sort of a, a visionary program that you know if you go to altair.tv and um you support the project get you know we'll be able to keep you in the loop at least mm -hmm. while we're small and that's probably a pool that we're going to um pull from when you know, when we need to test things out, because like, again, we're trying to be as transparent with this as possible and, you know, lay all our cards out on the table. And, you know, if we have to grow slowly just to make sure that, you know, like there have been, there have been good questions about that. And, and as much as I'd love to be a, a smash hit day one, I, I don't want to compromise again. Like we're, we're creator focused. Mm hmm where it's like i don't i don't want to be like oh we're growing too fast sorry guys you're just gonna have to live with these these uh th this downtime yeah so so what are your thoughts on um i mean we talked about a little bit about like moderation but is there anything concrete you can give me in terms of you know what your beliefs are or how you're going to be handling uh you know moderation because I, I feel like that is definitely something that you know you've kind of mentioned is a big reason why you got into building your own in the first place. So do you have any insight on that? Yeah, so we have, uh, if I believe if you go to, I don't know if I linked it off of Altair.tv, but if you go to Altair DOT TV on, on Twitter, uh, there's a link to a Notion document, which is pretty much our, uh, our manifesto. And um, from the get-go, um, we have a code of conduct that we will adhere by on 
pretty much all our all our projects, um, all our open source projects, all of our all of our sponsored events, things like that. It's very, you know, at the door, you agree to this code of conduct. And you know, a lot of the the stuff that came out of um at least the commentary that came out of, you know, Twitch's banning and kind of hesitance to ban people, larger broadcasters because of the money they bring in. Like we're, we're forming this in a way that it's like, none of that is a thing. If we're, that's another reason we want to sort of separate out how you support a broadcaster versus how you support us as a platform. Because if we do that, then, then we can get rid of bad actors without being, without having to think about the fact that, oh, wow, we're taking a big hit in, in revenue here by eliminating this person. It's like, no, you know, if they, if they break the code of conduct, then, you know, obviously moderation is, cannot be spoken about in like this, this short of a, um, this short of a context, but sure. we're, we're at least laying the foundation where we as a business are not tied to um the revenue we're not we're not handcuffed to the revenue of our uh of our content creators mm -hmm. so okay so to follow up with that because sure. i know people are going to ask and you know you've mentioned on your your site about you know your platform not being ad supported so what are your plans for monetization for altair so i coming from github if you don't know what a GitHub is. It, it is the uh, it is a kind of an open source platform, a development platform. And you know, I was one of the early employees there, and I really loved what they were able to do. Um, they were also a bootstrapped company. They didn't take any uh, any venture capital for like the first five years of operation, and they did that by by leaning on this uh, a freemium model. So we're still trying to figure out the 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 basics of what that will be but being able to say hypothetically have our own version of a sort of a twitch prime where you it would be more like discord nitro not twitch prime so like you you would support discord and then you'd get that token to boost a server right we would like that's a model that we like that we're, we're that we're looking into so being mm -hmm. able to support altair and then be able to support a streamer with a token. And then above and beyond that, if you were to support a, a streamer, 100% of that minus any, like, I guess, like, you know, transcoding fees and things like that would go to the broadcaster. We wouldn't be taking out, we wouldn't be like, oh, 30% of that's also going to us. It's like you, we want people to believe in Altair, believe in us as a platform. And if we can't get that, then that you know that really tells us what the we're, we're trying something that the market isn't very uh used to mm -hmm. we're going out there and asking like we need we need your support as well but then you, you gotta make money i mean at the end of the yeah, day you, you gotta do. figure yeah. out how to make money right exactly we have to stay afloat we have to be able to deliver content to people we have to be able to um keep this yeah so there are other companies that have done it and you know you have you have examples like wikimedia and wikipedia and I mean, granted, I would I would never want a site that just hounds their users for donations at the end of the year like Wikipedia does. But you know, <laughs> we, we would hopefully have a model that would enable us to to grow from a freemium standpoint. That if you want to support us, there are things we can provide you, like yeah, public television too. Um, you know, a stake in the company. You know, like hey, you're a, you're a you are now a shareholder in Altair. You have shares in Altair now. Like that's something that. Are, you know, again, REI does with their co-op um, and different companies do, but there, there's so many ways to cut this up. And I think we'll eventually be heading into sort of a, a more hybrid model. Um, what that is, we don't know, but those are definitely ideas that we're entertaining because we really believe, and I think it was already said in the chat, that that feeling of having a stake, an actual stake in the company, an actual vote then you know uh then people would be more feel more empowered to support that platform for sure so do you i guess you, you plan on incorporating streamers and it sounds like even viewers into the decision making process of 
how this platform looks. I think there would be a like we want to be like ha like half employee owned and provide this sense of ownership to our you know our stakeholders. And you know we want to be able to go out there and say hey guys what should we you know we have our vision of what we should be building but mm -hmm. since we are not doing this to to make a profit you know we're not going to start throwing things that get you to buy bits like you know a lot of the things that twitch has put in let's say you know i don't, I don't want to keep bringing them up as the example but like api support versus extensions that that take bits like if you look at the communication that's coming out you'll see that you know the 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 stuff about their api support is like very tiny compared to like hey you can make money on twitch using you know by creating bit enabled extensions mm -hmm. you know so we want to be able to build stuff that people we want to build uh, build uh products and features of the service that people actually people want that serve them that serve our, sure. our, our our viewer base our creator base so yeah. you know there's a future in which we would have like a vote like people with like voting stakes <clears throat> in you know what we build what we build next what we focus our time on mm -hmm. yeah and i think like you know a lot of streamers and viewers will appreciate that because i think you know, one of the criticisms that, you know, people make of Twitch is it feels like there's not they're not like in touch with the community as much like they're they have become more corporate as they've grown. And it's it's been uh, it's felt like tougher to make your voice heard. So I think people will really appreciate, um, you know, that that communication, that transparency, um, people people love transparency like they want to. Um, People yell at Twitch because they want Twitch to be better. So it makes sense to, you know, be open to to listening to what the community like thinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens from within as well. Like when I was working at um when I was working for Twitch and you know, starting to meet broadcasters and become a broadcaster myself, there were a lot of things that I wanted to see happen, but then, you know, at the the top levels of the organization had their views, had their, you know, their priority lists and a lot of us in the trenches were sort of you know be like not we, we were deprioritized and you know there there's so many people and marcus graham dj wheat is like you know i i watch what he tries to do for the company and like he is such a genuine force for good that like you know a company that didn't have the structure that Twitch has could be so much better following a vision like his. Mm -hmm. And like, I want, I want that. Uh, that's what I want to see out of, you know, people in, in our, in our community is this, this willingness to constantly try and make the lives of creators better. Like, I don't want this to be some, I don't want, I don't want to look at content creation in 10 years and see that it was some sort of gig economy akin to Uber, like where you're, you're asking for for crackers and but putting in your putting in your life and getting nothing out of it mm -hmm. so okay so i've got uh i, I want to steer this to talk about viewers because you know mixer one of mixer was really good at figuring out how to get streamers to the platform mm -hmm. and i think you've kind of highlighted some of those points similarly with altair of of, of what would what would be enticing for a streamer to stream on Altair? But what about the viewers? Like, you know, Mixer could not figure out how to get viewers on their platform. Do you have any plans in place or any any type of vision for making it an appealing place for viewers to choose Altair? I think that, um, you know, one of the things I have to actually become a lot more comfortable with is the is the fact that, you know, Twitch, for better or for worse, has set the standard for what um pe for what viewers expect out of a streaming service for sure and i mean there are a lot of things about twitch that i love i still love what twitch stands for i love i love this platform i just wish it was better i wish it was better for us but the so there are a lot of things like we want emotes 
Like I want to be able to take my community and place it in Altair and have it feel this feel the same. Just we do protected. love emotes. I, yeah, we love emotes. It's in like <laughs> you know we have, we've had these other services that try stickers and then and then Mixer tried stickers and D Live has stickers and Trovo has um stick everybody has stickers, but like. You know, having emotes, and I love emotes. I, I absolutely love emotes. And like, that's something I definitely want to be able to keep over. I think it's that feeling of making sure that your viewers, when you move over, that they feel at home. Familiar. It needs to have a sense of familiarity. It has to, it has to have familiarity. And I, I think that, you know, that's something we're going to have to lean into. And from a feature standpoint, like... I don't I don't think we're necessarily like going to we're not going to shy away from looking at stuff that that would make people feel more comfortable on our make viewers feel more comfortable on our platform. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, again, I, I have my own I have my own community to think about when moving them over. And if they if they come over and they're like, I don't like this as much as Twitch, then boom, that's a red flag for me. Um, so. We're trying to take those standards that Twitch has put down, mm -hmm. and try to improve on them. Um, you know, ideas that I've had while working for Twitch and ideas that I've seen people talk about when I've been on, you know, shows like this and and podcasts and stuff. Um, you know, we we have the opportunity to move a little faster on on stuff like that. Um, when it comes to emotes and quality of life for for viewers and for broadcasters. Um, like even even from the sense of custom customizing um, the viewing experience. Like just yesterday, I, I tweeted about wanting to uh, get a sense of how people use Twitch, how people use streaming services. Like do you use it full screen? Do you use it in theater mode? Do you use it by default? And that kind of pushed us toward this sense of like, wow, this should look more like a Discord than it should Twitch. Because, you know, if people want to, edit their preferences if people are like i never want to see my i, I never want to see any numbers on the site toggle i never want to see i never want to see chat toggle i want to always be in theater mode toggle like those are those are things that apps like discord and slack and you know even like code editors do very well but you know if we can provide that sort of experience then that's something we're going to look into um again quality of life stuff stuff that twitch can't necessarily do without completely like either breaking down their infrastructure because i mean their infrastructure a lot of it's like 10 years old from the jtv days mm -hmm. we, ha we have a sense to kind of like remix it a little bit you have the chance to build like it from home. the ground up build it fresh mm -hmm. yep it's, it's it's much newer um what about like communication like um, you know, in, on Twitch you used to have, um, you know, messages and then that kind of got reduced to whispers, but now like those aren't even like, those are kind of a mess still. Um, you wound me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, disclosure, I was the product designer on whispers. So yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I, I do like the idea. I like the instant messaging, uh, ability, but it feels like, you know, it's still falling short from what it could be. So what what is what are you doing with Altair in terms of that? Since you know you built Whispers, what's it gonna look like on Altair? We don't want to do that. We don't want to touch it. I mean, pretty much what the like we want to do one thing from the beginning and do it really well. Like what mm -hmm. I remember when Twitch was trying to build group chat and everybody was like, "Why are we building this? Everybody's moved over to Discord anyway." Like we want to be a part of the ecosystem. We don't want to try and be the be all end all for this. Like again, going back to going back to you know my community, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull my community off of Discord just because we built something. So like yeah, if Discord integration is is in the future, if Discord wants to work with us on stuff like that, like you know we're looking at different communicate like different chat methods that are IRC based. Mm -hmm. We, we don't, we want to give you a place to create content and sure, if people are like, hey, instant messaging would be great, then if there is a, if we can have a competitive advantage that people will then use 
That's great. But I love my I love my Discord. I absolutely love my Discord. And Discord is, you know, they have been growing and they are the de facto. So sure. we want to we want to we want to be able to support that. That'd be awesome. Because yeah, I think we like, don't want to It's like I don't want to half ass anything. Really, it's, that's pretty much what it is. It's like if we put out a, a a communication or a friends platform or any of these things, it's going to be half assed from the beginning, and it's just not going to feel like it it communicates to what our values are. Yeah, I think recognizing that is so important too, because um, y you know, like uh, I think it's almost hand in hand. If you stream, you probably have a community server on Discord. Um, mm -hmm. So why reinvent the wheel if you could, you know, get that seamlessly working together? That would be that'd be that'd be awesome. That'd be super cool. It's going to be an interesting challenge. Definitely. Like what Discord integration means is something that we're going to have to, you know, talk to potential potential viewers and, and content creators about. But, you know, it's something that's it's really exciting. And I mean, people have been bringing up BTTV and things like that um, are we will be using the same API that developers will be using that we're building it like. We are not going to have a separate public API and then we're going to have a private one. Like you're going to, we're going to have a, an API that supports, we're going to have a, a, we want the developer community to support Altair and we don't want them recreating the wheel because Twitch refuse or, you know, a service like Twitch refuses to put these features out for them. Mm -hmm. And so like, yeah. You know, BTTV should easily be, or I don't know, better Altair TV should be able to <laughs> plug in. But I would want to see developers be empowered to make the service better rather than adding stuff that we lack, because that's stuff that we should be doing. Yeah, that's sure. That we, yeah. And, and I would rather see developers take their time on trying to innovate and trying to show, you know, the cool stuff like heat maps on, on, uh, on extensions and and things like that some of the really cool really cool visualizations um yeah we want to be welcoming of third-party developers from the beginning because awesome. that's you know we are we are we were third-party developers at you know at a point in time or another yeah absolutely um okay so we have time for let's say a few more questions i want to get questions from chat so if you guys have anything that you really want to get an answer on i saw some questions thrown out earlier Feel free to repost, um, Brian, and I'll leave it to you if you want to uh, pick and choose what you answer, um, you know, as sure. we, we close out our time here. So if you have any questions um, at all for Brian here talking about Altair, feel free to throw it out. Any any concerns or uh, curiosities you might have and, uh, and and we'll answer those before we wrap up. And then I'll have one more question for you before we uh, uh, blinky. before we end the segment. Um, OK, sounds good. <laughs> Uh, any questions from chat? Let me see. Let me see what we got. Ah, uh, analytics. Yeah, uh, that there's a there's a question. Um, so one of the basics, like one of the things that I've been really looking at is building a mindful service and. I know that like metrics being a toggle really matters, like we'll provide as many metrics as we can when it comes to being able, I mean, that's stuff, that's stuff that we have to, you have to educate us on because we need to know what's important to you when it comes to like those, that those pieces of data. I, I have to admit that. Yeah, sure. I like, sure. I, I can't really speak to the analytics question from a, uh, from a personal standpoint, because it gives me anxiety. Like I get extreme anxiety from analytics. So I try to hide them wherever I can. And like one of the first, and like that being a toggle is really, really important. Um, so, but if you want to see those, if you want to see analytics, we like, I want to be, I want to hear from you as to what are the metrics that are actually important rather than what we could um, just pull from a database, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, will it be open source? I'll, we'll, we'll have a good amount of open source. I'm not sure if the project itself will be open source, but um, that that's something I'm going to have to talk to to Cody about. Uh, mentioned in a previous tweet that streamers may have to pay into features like transcode and music libraries. Can you elaborate on this? So, 
the the thought behind that is that we like people have said that they don't want to have like i guess this is something i didn't bring up we're not gonna have a a a, a, a partnership model on altair and you'll find that in our in our manifesto and because we don't believe in and if you look at the twitch stream like it's so timely if you look at the hashtag twitch streamers ta hashtag on twitter i have not like, yet <laughs> it's 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 sobering because you have all of these people show saying that i i'm doing the best i can just so they can start making make, making money on twitch and that hurt that hurts me because it's like twitch put these arbitrary this arbitrary cast system in place that people are now assigning self-worth to and it's like i don't like you shouldn't have to do that in order to just make a, make money on a platform like like patreon doesn't doesn't have this oh you need to hit this specific partnership level in order to in order to start making money with the platform and you see all these people like you, th this shouldn't be the focus should be on the content creation not arbitrary not these arbitrary levels so to go back to the question people want to pay for transcodes but transcodes cost money so that's where the sort of like you get 100% of the of your cut from whatever whatever you get supported by minus whatever the the transcoding costs but you can then we will have an a la carte system where for like smaller broadcasters you can toggle that on on a month or monthly or depends on how our back end works on a monthly basis and be like, oh, I want transcodes this month. Oh, I don't need that this month. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pay for that. But if you if you're just starting out and you want transcodes, you should be able to pay in for that. But if you're already making money, that will be subtracted by from your um your payout, so to speak. That won't be going to us, that'll be going to our operating costs. So that's we wanna be we'll be transparent about that too. Gotcha. Um, do you uh, so? Uh, do you have a roadmap publicly available? No, we don't yet. Okay. Um, we're we're still working in the early stages of um, of a lot of that planning. Um, and so when we do, though, we'll we'll get that out. Awesome. And, and I see that there was linked a uh, manifesto. This is your guys's basically kind of outlining what Altair is and what you guys want to do with it, right? Mm hmm Okay, cool. So we'll throw that link out if you guys want to check that out. Uh, here it is in chat. Um, and, you know, one more question before we wrap up, um, and then I'll give you an opportunity to kind of talk about, like, you know, any closing thoughts. But I want to ask, uh, you know, people that are watching, I'm sure there are some people that are eager to help out in any way they can. Um, do you have, how, how can people help? I guess. Well, uh, I, I'm pretty active on the Altair Twitter. Um, that is me speaking on the Altair Twitter at the moment. Uh, we don't have a social media manager yet, but, uh, being able to just interact with us, um, you know, it's, it's not so much hype creation as as much education for us. Uh, if you want to help out monetarily, we do have our, what we call our visionaries program that you like on, if you go to Altair.tv, we have a, uh, a give butter link still such a weird website name um <laughs> where you can you can support us monetarily and then you know you'll be able to get you know, you're showing us that you believe in us early and we'll be sort of giving you a, a badge on your profile when we do launch um yeah that's that's just you know keeping the it's going to be a long process this is going to be a really long process and we're only a month in uh without the funding that most other companies have like we're going to we're going to move as fast as we can with as much as we have and so you know i guess just keeping keep believing in us and keeping that conversation going and and letting us know what your what your perfect streaming platform is and the, we don't want to be all things to, to everybody but we do want to be able because Twitch still exists. <laughs> you know, if we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be putting down stakes and lines in the sand, and if people don't want to cross those, great. There are other services that are gonna be out there. We don't want to be that replacement. We want to be an alternative, something else that you can feel like you have a you can bring your community and feel safe. Um, an alternative. 
if I might an say. An alternative, yes, an alternative. You can you can take it. It's fine. You can steal that. I'll I'll give you permission. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm sure we will catch up with you over time as uh, because we're all super excited about this. Uh, anything else that you want to say before we end the segment? Yeah, um, thank you, everybody, for the it's been crazy uh, this entire last sort of month or so. Um, the the interest in it uh, and, and everything has been it's been mind blowing seeing that people want this and talking to people and seeing just seeing everything from like the standpoint that I am at now. Mm -hmm. It shows that this service should exist. Um, it's going to be patient with us is all I ask. We're removing I've I've taken time off streaming to work on this because I want this to be out as fast as you guys do. Um, but like believe in us. We be we believe, and hopefully you see through our manifesto, and you can agree with us that our heart is in the right place. And we and I believe that you know, as as long as our heart's in the right place and our vision's in the right place, that we can build off that vision and start something that people can really ally themselves with and and feel like not only support but feels like it supports them on a daily basis. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and there's definitely room for other streaming platforms in the space like, you know, Twitch, which has the majority right now, but it's not even about that. Like there's just room for different takes on providing a platform for streaming. So mm -hmm. um, if you guys want some more information, Altair.tv and also check out their Twitter at Altair.dottv. We got the links for you in chat. And if you're watching the VOD, it'll be in the description below. So check it out. Uh, we will definitely check in on Altair over its development. And Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Really, thank really appreciate that. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. Take care.